Hi everyone, I'm Josh Rivers, a player researcher at CCP Games, and I'm going to talk today about how my team and I integrated academic research on EVE Online and other massively multiplayer online games into our development practices, which in turn has helped us more holistically understand who is or is not playing our game, why or why not, and then make a better game accordingly. I'm going to start by introducing myself and my background, lead into some practical tips on discovering academic research and gaining access to it, then walk us through an example of how I translated an academic research article into an actionable research plan for myself, which then turned into development goals for our game designers and programmers. First, some of the basics about where this all began, including who I am and why I'm coming into games from academia, which has helped shape my approach and that of my team. To begin with, I didn't come to games research through any sort of standard channel, if such a thing exists. I did not study computer science, human computer interaction, or even psychology. Instead, I studied anthropology, a social science that is somewhat ignored even within academia and often conjures images such as these of remote research projects on developing societies, island peoples, and a generally colonial approach to studying the diversity that exists in our world. Thankfully, this is not the anthropology I was trained in, and the condescension of early anthropology as rooted in good motives as it might have been has fallen largely to the wayside. Instead, I was trained to be highly critical of generalizations, to utilize both qualitative and quantitative research tools in an effort to answer carefully crafted research questions instead of research agendas. My training taught me to focus on how people situationally adjust in key, quote, diagnostical events, unquote, which translates from academic speak into normal language in the following way. Basically, how do people make do with what's around them at key moments in life in ways that show us how they generally operate? This translation of a key theoretical approach to understanding the world through anthropological eyes into an understandable sentence was just the first of many I would make when I started working at CCP roughly a year and a half ago. Before we get there, though, it's worth noting that I'm not just an anthropologist, someone who studies people, culture, and societies, but specifically a digital anthropologist, someone who studies and is trained to learn how technology impacts society, culture, group dynamics, and individual understandings of the world and the opposite as well. So to translate, I was specifically trained to study communities in virtual worlds like EVE Online, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, and how the virtual world itself impacted community dynamics, as well as how group interactions impacted the virtual world. So it's here that I started to become interested in, invested in player-centric thinking and development, seeing how successful it could be when a developer challenges their own assumptions and takes time to genuinely listen and observe not only their active players, but also adjacent gamers. This coalescing of social science, gaming, and research led me to where I am presently, CCP Games. Coming into the company with a highly academic background and not having an established user research team or division, I was a, at a bit of a loss at first as to how I could contribute to the development of a game I knew a fair bit about academically, but little about professionally. In short, I wasn't sure where research was meant to fit into the development process or how I could be of most use to the teams I was working with. It wasn't until I was assigned to work as the researcher for a development team focused on new player acquisition and retention that I began to put the pieces together. Speaking of new players, it's no secret that we at CCP have been focused on improving EVE Online for new players and ushering in a new generation of capsuleers for roughly the past year or so. It's perhaps also worth mentioning that I joined CCP as part of my dissertation field work, meaning I came to work at CCP because I needed to in order to collect data for my dissertation. Thinking back to the contrast between the colonial, generalizing, and largely lacking in reflexivity anthropology of yore, as compared to the anthropology I was trained in, it should come as no surprise that part of current anthropological commitments is to, quote, unquote, give back to people and the ones that one works with. Since I was working with CCP to collect data for my dissertation, I worked from the start to give back in any way I could. And so we've arrived at the meat of what I want to talk about today, the story of an anthropologist set adrift in a game development. When I first arrived at CCP, I was given a couple of weeks to adjust to Iceland, to the company, and to get a feel for the kind of projects we had ongoing. At the time, and to this day, one of the major focuses was making the early game more enjoyable for new players so that we could attract that aforementioned new generation of capsuleers. Across the company, there were a lot of theories about the main new player struggle we were facing. Namely, 
our ability to bring in and attract huge numbers of new players, but then a large number of them would be seen to stop playing after only a few minutes or a few hours, maybe. So these theories ranged from hyper-focused beliefs about minutia and certain user interface elements to sweeping statements about the kinds of players the game attracts and keeps given its history and reputation. Being the curious anthropologist I was, I started by diving into what was comfortable for me, Google Scholar. Having prepared to undertake my PhD project by reading everything there was to read about CCP games, game development companies, and EVE Online specifically, I knew there was a great deal of research already out in the world, but that might not be the case if you've been outside of academic circles for a while. And so here's my first actionable tip. Go to DIGRA and sign up for their mailing list. For as widely read as I was, it was by pure chance that as I began investigating why gamers might try EVE out but never return, that an email announcing Kelly Bergstrom's latest article on exactly that matter was publicized pretty widely across said mailing list. For those of you who don't know DIGRA, who I believe has some connections with IGDA and actually this very conference, they are a truly international professional association of researchers, writers, and people working in games who research everything related to digital games and the people who play them. It's also worth noting that there's been a fair bit of research on analog games mentioned on the mailing list and at Deager conferences in the past year or two. So if you're working on more analog stuff, that's totally fine. There's a place for you in Degra as well. Their website and their Toddy Gras journal are a great resource for exploring what's out there about your game or games or anything similar to yours. And the best part about Degra's resources is that they're open access. You won't need a library or any subscriptions to expensive academic journals. But this leads me to my next practical tip related to discovering and gaining access to academic research. Reach out to a local university or department. Perhaps one of the better kept secrets of academia is the visiting scholar or guest scholar status that exists across multiple departments and universities. While every university has a different approach, and even within a singular university, every department's going to function a little differently, most will be familiar with the terminology of affiliate or visiting researcher, visiting scholar, guest of the university, they go by different names, but the basics are the same. In theory, these positions are held for people conducting research locally, oftentimes on international grants from places like the Fulbright Association, the National Science Foundation, or in the case of anthropology, the Winter Grin Foundation. In practice, however, the title grants you access to the library and occasionally an institutional email. In return, the department will often ask their visiting scholars to give a brief lecture, attend events hosted by the department, are similar such activities. So to summarize, if you're struggling to even gain access to academic articles, try to collaborate with a university department near you that's aligned with your research interests. Try thinking outside of computer science and user experience alone, and see if they're able to offer you a visiting scholar position to grant you access to the university library. If that fails, which it very well might, it's worth noting that authors of academic texts are within their rights to distribute the article to whomever they want. I've seen very few exceptions to this. So if you're not able to access a university library or the local sociology department de declines your offer of regaling their students about the rich world of user research that exists, simply email the author of the article yourself or head over to academia.edu, seen here, where several academic authors keep PDFs of their work easily accessible. It's also worth mentioning that you can and should make your own academia.edu accounts to keep up to date with research on your game, your company, and anything that might touch on your particular focus within user research. We've talked a bit now about finding research through Google Scholar, DIGRA, and academia.edu, as well as how to gain access to research through two different channels. But how do we translate the following sorts of sentences, seen here, into knowledge that our development teams can utilize? Here, for instance, we read about Bergstrom's exploration of what we were most interested in, players who quit EVE Online. At first glance, the piece is largely about looking at players who quit through a leisure studies framework, the meaning of which is largely unclear, well, at least to me. We do also learn that quitting is maybe not a permanent departure from the game, uh, but the key takeaway here is actually in the final line of the abstract, at least for me. That is, that game scholars, reading through Bergstrom's piece, it would be easy to get lost in the details and in the theoretical framework on my way to digesting the article. Here's my practical tip for reading your carefully acquired academic pieces. Start by understanding that academic writing is its own genre. Everyone here is familiar with it, I'm certain, but it bears repeating, academic writing is not normal writing. 
despite what professors, researchers, and aspiring anthropologists might think. What this means practically is that you have to be ready to tackle the piece, sit with a couple of sentences, and understand that theory is central in the less practically focused pieces of anthropology, media studies, sociology, English, and so on. The goals of these studies are not practical solutions, but the production of knowledge, as vague as that might sound. So when you start with such a piece, remember that it's a lens through which one looks at the world. There are simple lenses, such as magnifying glasses, but most academic pieces often develop into much bulkier and more complicated lenses like this, that sometimes even get a little bit outrageous. Take time to learn what they're saying, word by word, but most importantly, focus on trying to find what's important for you. What caught your attention in the title or abstract? Find where the bulk of that argument is made and glean what you can from the insights the author is delivering while remaining open to other learnings. These aren't actionable reports per se, but the inspiration points for developing your own insights. What do I mean by that? Let's take this example, another piece by Bergstrom on EVE Online. I originally picked up this piece because of its provocative title. Especially as somebody working at CCP, I was dying to know what exactly this person quoted knew about the game that told them to avoid it. The research is not perfect. Let me perhaps remind everyone that academic work can be and often is flawed in its own ways. But being generous to those findings is also useful when seeking next steps and actionable items. Looking at the piece, going back to that, Bergstrom again mentions leisure studies and reminds us that gender impacts player experiences and perceptions in multiple ways. Let's take the final passage, for example, and turn it into an actionable research development and publishing nugget through the formula of read, investigate, interpret, and deliver. I'll start by reading the whole passage. EVE Online is a game that has a reputation for being an outlier in the MMOG market, both in its affordances, described earlier in this chapter, but in the type of player it purportedly attracts. Here, Bergstrom is talking about EVE Online as a kind of game, as well as to the perception of EVE's player base, albeit couching this with the word purportedly, so as to make it clear that she does not argue that most capsuleers are older white males. This seems easy enough to read, right? Well, investigating is the next step. And in this case, it looks like exploring our particular UI and UX affordances or how EVE Online might differ for standard MMOs and games. What set us apart? What made those things special and unique? This is an ongoing investigation, but from my side of things, it took the form of interviewing new players, people who had tried out the game and quit, as well as veteran players, collecting qualitative insights on how the game plays differently and then interpreting, the, or interpreting those insights into key action areas for our development teams by deducing the major differences and making suggestions on how to bridge those gaps. This leads us to the final step here, deliver. After investigating and interpreting, I deliver the findings in two to three sentence nuggets so that the development team can choose which particular opportunities they want and are able to tackle at present. Let's try this formula again with the next sentence one that focuses on the homogenous player community of EVE Online and claims that even we at CCP have talked about how space-themed games are somehow more interesting to male players. It reads as such, journalists, current players, and even the game's developers have all argued that a space-themed game is somehow inherently more interesting to male players, and this becomes the most frequent means to explain this very homogenous player community. For the record, I am unaware of when this claim would have been made or by whom, but it is certainly not something we stand by today. And in fact, this sentence was part of the spark of a larger conversation we've had and are now acting on at CCP to try and engage women, highlight their stories, and make sure we clarify that this game is for everyone. It's not just a game for men, space is for everyone. With this sentence, we undertook that same ritual of investigating whether the claim holds up, wherein this claim did not, then interpreting what that means. In this case, that there's a widely accepted belief that the game is catering to older male players and that CCP sees that as acceptable before delivering that insight to our development teams and marketing teams who are both now eagerly at work to ensure that EVE is not perceived of as the sole territory of older white men. This paragraph goes on, of course, and highlights a nugget for me and my team, namely, that there are great insights to be gained by talking to gamers and players outside of your game's demographic. 
This nugget is something I've used to conduct explorative research on motivations behind gaming, social groups online, and why certain people who have heard a lot about EVE Online never seem to stick around despite praising the game in surveys. I am mindful of time, however, and want to leave you with a summary of my practical tips. I started by determining the research question at hand. In my case, it was exploring why players might quit EVE, as well as what attracts new players to the game but sees them leave shortly after joining. I then found the research I was looking for on Google Scholar, and because of having expended my network to DIGRA and other game studies researchers before, and then gained access to it through an affiliation I had with the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. After accessing that research, I put it through the steps of read, investigate, interpret, and deliver, while keeping in mind that theory has to be sat with and digested. Putting it through this process has led to some exciting opportunities for our development team, both on in-game features, as well as marketing opportunities and more. This flow, though, highlights that there is a gap between academia, specifically of games, and game studios, but that when this gap is bridged, there's a lot to gain. As researchers, we should look beyond our standard sites of inquiry and standard methodologies and try to take inspiration from other fields such as sociology, media studies, and of course, anthropology. But of all the practical suggestions I have given throughout this talk, I hope this final one sticks with you most. Academic researchers are researchers too, and they would love to share their insights with you and your team, particularly when fairly compensated for their time. Look beyond the standard consultants, and you'll be surprised by what novel insights academia can provide, both for MMOs such as EVE, but also for other types of games. In working together with researchers everywhere, we stand to create a truly enriching game that both satisfies and fulfills our players, while also producing the kinds of knowledge that every academic would die to have. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to any questions that you might have.